there, there's been a bunch of obstacles uh, and hurdles that patients have to uh, you know, basically overcome to get to see the right person. And this happens in most specialties. We're talking today about what's broken with the American healthcare system, an issue that certainly came to light during the COVID-19 pandemic. And I'm joined today by Dr. Alejandro Badia, a hand surgeon, an expert hand surgeon with Badia Hand to Shoulder. He's an orthopedic surgeon, an author, uh, founder of OrthoNow, and a cadaver lab in, um, here in the United States. So an interesting background, some interesting accomplishments. Let's talk about the new book, Healthcare from the Trenches. Why did you write the book? Mostly out of frustration, Keith, and, and thanks for having me. I felt that both the, and I hate to use the word providers, it's, a, it's an insurance term, but basically the clinicians, whether it be the doctors or the nurses, the therapists, the, the, the PAs, needed um, a, need a voice to, to, to tell the, the, the public what the challenges are. So the, the book really is um, contributors of certainly myself, but multiple contributors, including patients, talking about how cumbersome it is to really deliver and receive healthcare. Uh, and thanks to all of these hurdles and bureaucracy that have been placed there needlessly, and end up uh, paradoxically increasing the cost uh, dramatically of U.S. healthcare. You know, paradox is an interesting word because a lot of people from around the world come to the U.S. to get their health care. Some people say it's certainly one of the top systems in the world. But during the COVID-19 pandemic, we learned it's certainly not perfect. What are some of the major shortfalls or problems you're seeing in the system that you write about in the book? Well, uh to begin with, it, it's uh, access is often very challenging. And then what happens is, is once you, you're faced with that patient, there is this third party that does, isn't just paying for the care, receiving premiums and paying, but they're also somehow have um, uh, interposed themselves. And that's really the insurance industry. And it's unfortunate because, you know, we, we know it's, it's, it's a necessary component but it's gotten to the point where they're almost practicing medicine. And that's really uh, unacceptable uh, for a variety of reasons. But one of the main reasons is it actually drives up costs. So they do this because they think that if they, they provide something like an authorization, which I call a, a four letter word in my book, that authorization really comes from somebody who doesn't have medical training in many cases, is sitting somewhere else, is not with the patient, and, and they're just creating another hurdle by somebody who has a salary and benefits program. So it's not like these people are free. So why would you interpose something when the best person to decide what's needed medically is that clinician? Now, it doesn't mean that the clinicians are perfect, and certainly there are some that may overutilize, but the oversight is really what the industry should do, not be a barrier. And that's what we have to eliminate and that alone will drive down healthcare costs and will also allow us to take care of the less fortunate in society, uh, which, which we see the dilemma and the, uh, the debate uh, in this election year where how we're going to you know, provide um, a care for somebody uninsured. Well, if we can save enough money with our current system, streamlining it, there certainly will be left, money left over to take care of those people. So in the book, you talk about removing hurdles and barriers between the patient and the, the care provider they need to get to. Is one of the first answers just getting them to the right doctor quicker yes, and in easier fashion? The, yes, I think the days of, and you know, sometimes I, I raise the ire of my primary care colleagues, and I don't mean to. We, we certainly, I mean, I, 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 I really adore my, my primary care um, a physician who's in the same building. And uh, in fact, I need to see him uh, next week. Um, the, the fact is that uh, medicine's gotten so complex and you can't expect a well-meaning uh, primary care physician or internist to know the nuances of, of the eye or, or uh, when a woman has a uh, you know, slightly complicated pregnancy or an orthopedic problem. The, 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 the training uh, is just not adequate uh, to, to solve all of those, those areas. 
And that alone saves money because if you see the right clinician at the right time, right then and there, you saved a lot of money and, and you have a better outcome many, in many cases. So that, uh, th those facts combined will alone drive down the cost of healthcare. But for some reason, we, we, we developed this model about 30 years ago where we have this sort of physician gatekeeper. And we've seen that that just actually increases the cost. Uh, and that, that, I think that's, that's already it's sort of on its way out. But we, need to, we need to expedite that. You talk about a healthcare 3.0 for the American healthcare system in the book. Can you give me three or four thumbnails of what that looks like or what the highlights of that might be? Well, sure. I, I think that um, and I, I've, I've written articles to this regard about having a walk-in specialty centers, right? So one thing is that uh, create awareness in communities that there are particular centers where somebody could, could just walk in and have that at least that initial assessment. That right there would save a lot of money. Uh, another component is, you know, the hospitals are really for sick people. And we're seeing that now with COVID, right? In fact, the hospitals themselves say, please don't, don't come to us unless you're really having trouble breathing because it's not the right place. The, the hospital is a place for very, for very ill people or, or really very large, you know, major surgeries where they're going to need to be uh, admitted. Now, granted, hospital healthcare systems have outpatient services, but I think that we need to move even more towards that. And that'll be part of Healthcare 3.0, where we're even doing, uh, you know, knee replacements in our center. I've been doing shoulder replacements outpatient for the past seven or eight years. And that in and of itself saves a ton of money, not to mention complications because hospitals do have infection rates um, and they are more expensive. So we have to think about all these things in order to streamline care and, and make it more cost effective. So the book is called Healthcare from the Trenches, available on Amazon, yeah? Uh, yes, it's on Amazon. It, was, it came out first in the Kindle version. Uh, it was amazing how many people actually read that and, and gave reviews, but now it's in paperback. I'm happen to have one uh, right here. I'm, I'm actually signing because um, I have about 25 contributors. So uh, most of them I'm, I'm sending a, a book to. Uh, this is the book and I'm, I'm signing that to them. And it, you know, it basically, it's, the subtitle is an insider account of the complex barriers of US healthcare from the providers and the patient's perspective. Those are two very important elements in healthcare that really haven't had a voice. If you think about it, you, you hear uh, on the media uh, from the insurance industry, the pharmaceutical industry, uh, politicians, and even the, the physicians, whether it be the Anthony Fauci's or the Sanjay Gupta's, are very smart, well-informed people, but they haven't been in the trenches in a long time. So we need to get the dialogue between the public, and, and who are the patients, the end user of healthcare, and the people who actually deliver the care. Well, Dr. Alejandro Badia, thank you so much for your insights. I'm looking forward to reading the book. Thank you, Keith.